Clorand is going to execute all of her enemies. And in this guide, I will be going over what Clorand does, what her best weapons are, and what her best artifacts are. And of course, how to play her in her best teams. Let's get into it. Clorand is an Electro Sword DPS who uses her skill to do large normal attack damage. Clorand's normal attacks are a 5 hit combo, nothing to see here. The skill is a bit more interesting, however, so let's explain away. She will enter a gunslinging America mode where she will fire her gun. Pretty standard, but it's not over. Whenever she hits an enemy, she will gain Bond of Life. When it goes above 100%, her damage will decrease. When you press the skill button again, she will lunge forward and heal away this Bond of Life and a little more. This damage increases based on Bond of Life, so you will normal attack 30 times and press E until your duration is over. This ability will also disable outside healing like Arlequino, but it's better because she can heal outside of her E state. Any healing she does will get converted into Bond of Life at 80% efficiency. This means that healing 100% of your full HP would give you 80% Bond of Life. And then we get to the burst, a regular 5 hit attack with 60 cost. It also generates a large chunk of Bond of Life. Very good damage as well. You really want to use it. It makes up for 20% to 25% of her damage output and allows you to instantly lunge once you activate your E due to the Bond of Life it gives. Then we get to a large part of Clorand's damage output, which is her Ascension 1. Whenever an Electro Reaction is triggered, Clorand will gain flat damage based on her attack up to 1800. At pretty stacks, the amount of attack needed to cap is pretty 1000. And then, the A4 is honestly kinda boring, but still good. It first changes the healing to Bond of Life conversion to 100%, which is not interesting to me. What I find interesting is that it gives up to 20% crit rate when your Bond of Life changes when above 100%. This will be stacking up quite fast, so it's a pretty good passive. Our talent parity is pretty simple due to her kit's laser focus on her skill's normal attacks. Next is her ult. It has some good damage so you want to level that. Her regular normal attacks are genuinely useless so don't level those. It's quite important that your Clorand is using the right weapon because she is going to have the highest damage contribution. But what even is the right weapon? Well, let me inform you. Let's start off with the signature weapon, Absolution. It has a high base attack and quite a bit of crit damage. It also going to increase her damage bonus by up to 48% when your Bond of Life increases or decreases, something Clorand will be doing a lot. This means it is her best weapon, obviously. I will say, the one issue I have with it is that it's high base attack weapon. If it was low base stack, it would be better, since Clorand's favorite buff is flat damage, which would massively benefit from having a lower base stack, but with more crit damage. Then we get to the other good weapons that you can use if you have them. This category includes Haran, Misplitter, Foliar, and Black Sword mainly. There are other weapons, but those depend more on the team comp. Let's start with Haran. This has crit rate, a medium base stack, and it gives 40% normal attack damage, and 12% elemental damage bonus. A no-brainer for a normal attack DPS, like Morand. Then there's Misplitter, a high base attack with crit damage like her signature, and giving up the 40% damage bonus for simply using your burst and infused normal attack, very easy conditions to fill for Morand. Foliar Incision is a little more niche, but it is a big crit stick that does EM base damage on normal attacks making it especially good in an aggravate team. Black Sword gives crit rate and normal attack damage unconditionally, just a good overall weapon. If you are looking for something a little more free to play friendly, there is always Harbinger of Dawn and Finale of the Deep, being 3 star and Craftal respectively. Harbinger of Dawn gives a lot of crit, but this comes at the cost of very low base attack, making it less good for capitalizing on Clorand's A1. First I complained about having a high base attack, but now I'm complaining about low base attack. Just can't win here. Finale of the Deep is the opposite. It gives a lot of attack, but not much else. If you like the guide so far, be sure to like and subscribe. I do Genshin League TC quite often, and I'll be starting Weathering Waves content when it comes out. So, let's continue the video now. As for Cloran's sets, you'll be pleased to know that she has plenty of options. Let's start with the best in slot. 
Four piece harmonic whimsy gives you attack percent and up to 54% damage bonus just for influencing your bond of life. Something that Clorand will be doing plenty of. Very synergistic with her kit. But that is a new domain and you probably don't have a full set. So what else can you use? Well, Four Piece Echoes is a strong boxable set that's going to boost her normal attack damage by a certain percentage of her attack, just like her Ascension 1. No shock it has good synergy with her. The domain, however, kinda bad, and the set is niche. This means you can look at her third best in slot. Four Piece Gladiator will give Cloran attack percent and give her some normal attack damage bonus unconditionally. Very solid. You will be sure to have some good pieces of this as well because you get it from bosses. Then I want to mention 4-piece Thundering Fury. On the surface it looks bad since decreasing her E cooldown seems useless, but in an aggravate team you can actually extend your rotation since most of your buffs last quite a while, which can lead to more DPS. The main issue I have with this idea is that in multi-wave you should really just refresh all of your buffs on the next wave, and on a boss, you could just kill it before you even get the chance to extend your rotation. So I think Thundering Fury is just too niche to use. You are going to build your Clorand with an Attack Sands, Electro Goblet, and a Crit Damage Circlet. A good place to get your stats to would be about 2000 attack depending on the weapon, with a crit ratio of 60 to 200. You can sacrifice some crit rate for crit damage because of her Ascension 4 after all. As you can see here, the need to farm Whimsy is not too high but I still recommend it. As an Electro Carry, Cloran is very quickly being put into Aggravate teams, but that is pretty shallow if you ask me. She can do so much more, so here are some options. Let's start with the standard Aggravate team that everyone's putting Cloran into, which I believe is her most universal team that I expect everyone to play. This team consists of Cloran, Fischl, Kazua, and Nahida. Cloran is obviously the carry here, nothing much to say. We used Fischl for incredible damage output in the Aggravate team comp, as well as generating a lot of energy for Cloran to the point where she likely doesn't need to build energy recharge herself. Next up, Nahida, the best Ender character in the game with a massive EM buff, no need to explain further here. And then last, we have Kazua with his great buffing potential and grouping. This team is not as set in stone though. Let's start with the obvious, you can replace Nahida with Baiju for easier time swirling Electro, but this comes at the cost of AoE damage and buffing. You can also replace Fischl with a C6 Sora to Omega focus on Cloran's damage output. Next, I want to present you with a hyper carry team, Yunjin, Sara, and Kazuha. Kazuha is just the same as usual here, nothing special. Yunjin and Sara are peculiar though. Yunjin can run the 4-piece archaic Petra set to give you 35% electro damage bonus, and as well as this, her normal attack buff that Cloran can use exceptionally well. I've already covered why Yunjin is so good with Cloran, so you can watch this video here for that part. And then for Kucho Sara, 60% crit damage and attack, very good buffs. My favorite part is that Sara and Yunjin are both inherently front-loaded buffers, with their buff uptime having around the same duration for Cloran's uptime. This means that Yunjin's flat damage buff will also benefit from Kucho Sara's crit damage, making this a great team for doing a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Sadly, you can't really replace anyone here. It also suffers from AoE, because Yunjin stacks will deplete very fast when she's hitting more than one target. And then, there's some leftover archetypes you can go. There is Chevron's Overload, a pretty good archetype for current personal damage, but it is single target lock due to Overload and will do less damage than the previous mentioned Yunjin team. There's also double Hydro teams. You can never really go wrong with those. There's sadly not any specific synergy, it's just Farina and Jalan doing damage with Cloran cheering them on. Well, we've been on quite a roll with good consolations on limited units. Does Cloran deliver? Oh boy, she does. C1 will cause two coordinate attacks to happen once every 1.2 seconds when Cloran does a normal attack. A pretty good damage increase, actually. C2 will upgrade her A1 passive to be quite a bit stronger. While I do not believe this is better than the C1, it's still a strong consolation. C3 will level up her skill. It's a majority of her damage and an okay damage increase. C4 will just casually give you 200% burst damage bonus based on your bond of life. If you like nukes, you will like this C4. And then there's the C5, which will level up her burst. 
Before, I would have said it's kind of a mid-constellation if it weren't for the literal previous constellation being the C4. But I still don't think it's as good as the C3. And then C6. This might just be one of the most busted C6s. It will give Chloran 10% crit rate and 70% crit damage when she uses her E. Already off to a good start, but it's far from over. She costs up to 6 coordinate attacks as well that do 200% of her attack. Quite good, but wait, it's still not over. She will also gain 80% resistance to every element and interruption resistance for a whole second after her E lunge. Congratulations, you will now never die. These are all very good constellations, so if you want to see Sixer, have fun. I think Clorand is definitely the savior of Electra I've been waiting for, and I could not be happier about it. She might just end up being the most fun character to play in the game aside from the two Geo characters that I got to see 6 and I'm very excited to play her. I hope I helped you guys with your Cloran building, but that will be all from me. Peace.